Well, hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Patty. I go by Patty Mac Makes Everywhere Online. In this video, I wanted to just give you a little bit of, I guess, just a few tips and tricks for putting together the star blocks that I used uh, in the making of the uh, Sunshine Kittens, which is what I'm calling this really cute, brand new baby quilt and it utilizes the whiskers panel print so uh, let me just kind of show you how i put these together This is the little block that we'll be working with in the quilt and it is an eight and a half inch quilt block or eight inches finished and it's a standard sawtooth star you can see that I made it using flying geese units for the star legs and there's three versions of the same quilt block in the pattern. I just changed the colors. So this one is uh, with, we'll just call it color one, which is the orange, and then this fabric is the background fabric. And this one this one is with color one orange and color two, which is the pink color. And then our last version is where we reverse the pink and the orange. And I think you find if you stick to picking two colors that are your main colors and just alternate those in terms of a background and the star and then use that primary color which is the orange with a neutral, I think you'll find that you have blocks that really work well together and that just look really good. So how do we make this thing? The first thing I'll tell you is that I'm not going to do a full tutorial on the uh, flying geese. I have a video on that that I'll link you over to and I use the same method which is the four at a time flying geese using the Eleanor Burns method. The sawtooth star uh, it, I have a video on constructing a sawtooth star, and that one I used half square triangles, but in this one I did go with the flying geese. And for a couple of reasons, uh, first of all, what I like when you do the flying geese unit is you don't have that seam. And so if you've got a fabric that you really want to showcase, you don't have extra seams to deal with. And with this one, with the butterflies, I like that I don't have seams running through them. Also, this is kind of a small block at eight, eight, at eight and a half inches, and you don't want to add any more seams <laughs> than you need to. It's already a lot of seams, and you can see here I had a little bit of an issue keeping that one as it should be. So it, it's a lot of seams to manage, and if you can do the flying geese unit, I highly recommend that. So let's just talk about putting that together. When I uh, set up and I cut all my pieces, I did a few at a time and then I would just kind of keep them together where I would have my four flying geese, because you'll need four flying geese per block and you'll need uh, four two and a half inch squares per block. And then you'll need to fussy cut from the panel print uh, the kitten of your choice and we're going to use this one this morning. And so you're just going to set up your star. Some of these are kind of specific with where the butterfly falls. So I want to make sure that I have the butterfly in a position that I like. So I think we'll go with this. And uh, same thing with your background squares. You're just going to lay everything out. Uh, 
I had to break in for a second and just say, <laughs> hold on, wait a minute. Uh, yeah, in that video, you can see I got my star legs completely turned around. And I was more focused on looking at where the butterflies in the background were sitting <laughs> and not on the more important part, which is the star legs. Fortunately, I did catch myself before committing anything to sewing, <laughs> so I didn't have to rip back. Um, but I left it in because I want you to just kind of see how important it is to slow down and take your time because it is so easy to make a mistake when we go to put these blocks together, especially if we're distracted or we're tired. And uh, honestly, I have been all of those things in my life for the past couple of months. Uh, so anyway, if you are too tired, I would say just stop working. Uh, or uh, take a picture of the block before you commit it to the sewing machine just to make sure that you have everything in the right position. The reason that we take the photo is because for some reason you'll catch the mistake when you look at the photo, whereas in real life with your eye, you won't see it. I don't know why that is. I don't have an answer for you. I just know that it, it works. So anytime you're doing something that might be complicated in terms of um, block construction, definitely just slow down, take a picture first and look at the picture and make sure everything is where it should be. Okay, back to the video. Okay. And the way that I put this together is I would first construct this row and then this row and then your center. And then it kind of goes together like a nine patch. So once you have your three rows, then you're just going to put them together. Let's look at that. And that's how they're going to get together. And you just want to be really careful about trying to get all these seams to line up. And then once everything is put together, you'll have a block that looks like this. And then we'll just take these and put them into our overall design. I did wind up using my large eight and a half inch uh, ruler on each of the blocks just to make sure that they were sized correctly. It's not perfect. Uh, this one's pretty good. And I just wanted to check and make sure that I had preserved that quarter inch all the way around those star points as best I could. You'll find when you go to piece it together, you're just going to have to work with it a little bit. But anyway, that's our uh, star block and that's how we're going to put it together. I'll show you the tool. So believe it or not, even though it's a small unit, you're going to wind up using the large flying geese ruler. If you decide to go with the Eleanor Burns uh, method, that is. And so uh, what I did was um, use this one. So you have this very large one, which is a four by eight size, and then this one, which is a two by four size, and that's finished size. So that fits perfectly. To my cap. So for the cats, what you'll want to do is you'll take that panel print and what you're going to do is fussy cut and Personally, I find the easiest way to do it is to use the four and a half inch ruler and just lay it in place and cut the cats uh, that way. And then what you'll want to do is to mind your seam allowance. Now for this one, just the way this came in off the bolt, uh, that quarter inch seam is going through his ears. So this one I'll just keep probably as an alternate. I may not put him in the quilt. There are enough uh, designs in that panel print that I can make other choices. Now this one I had plenty of room. 
So for this one, I'll lose a little bit on this side of the yarn, but I'm okay about that because for me, the focal point is the kitten and I have plenty of space all the way around. So uh, the bit, best thing I can tell you about making this project is to just take your time, don't try to rush it, and uh, you know enjoy the process. Okay, let's go take a look at uh, what I have on the wall. And here's my quilt in process. I'm calling this the Sunshine Kittens. And I just think they're so adorable. And honestly, that whiskers panel print, that's what really makes this whole thing. Uh, but also <laughs> the, the careful color placement. Um, if you would like to know more about this project, my previous video, which I will link below for you, will have more details and information. And I also have a blog post and I will link that for you uh, below as well. I am in the process of working on a full written pattern, uh, but until then, uh, enjoy the video and the blog post. And until next time, my friends, happy quilting.